Welcome, 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 welcome to be in the garden, be in nature. I trust you are well. I certainly am. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey in my garden. If you are new here, you are very welcome. You are now one of the gardeners. You are now one of the community. We are part of this community. And if you are a returnee, thank you so much for your support. I'm out in the garden today. It's springtime and the weather is glorious. I buy one of my flower beds and my task today is actually to move a plant because I haven't seen it flower for years. Let's just stop and listen. Can you hear the birds? Oh, it's beautiful. It must be... Listen to the birds. Listen to the birds chirping away. Lots of them are nesting out. So I'm in one of my garden beds. I'm not literally in it, I'm just by it. <laughs> and it's because I plan to remove one of the plants that's in there, but it just doesn't seem to flower in this spot. I want to show you the flower, see if you recognise the plant. It's only just emerging through the ground. Do you even begin, can you even begin to recognise this plant here? The pronunciation, I may or may not get it right, is Zantadicia. Zantadicia. How do you pronounce it? But this is an Aram lily. And I've had it for years. In fact, I've had it for about 15 years. And I've only ever seen it flower once in this garden. I suspect that I really don't have it in the best position. This lily can actually thrive near the ponds. So my plan is to dig them all out and put them, at least for now, into a container where there are no drainage holes and allow the rainwater to fill it up. And I'm going to watch and see whether putting them into a container where it's actually going to have its roots soaking in water, whether that will help this year. Because I've looked for this year after year for it to grow and to flower because it has the most fantastic flowers. I'll see if I can put in a little um, image of what it looks like. It's a... Um, a a large stalked flower and the flower itself is white in colour but the internal parts have some fantastic yellow, yellow like a buttercup yellow and I'm going to see if I can insert some images here but I just, <laughs> the cockerel, the louder I speak the cockerel gets louder too. So I have got some beginnings of it here but my plan today is to dig it right up and put it into a container. So here we go. I can't complain that the cockerels are making noise because we are out in nature, aren't we? Out in the garden, so <laughs> we'll just have to compete. So I'm going to use this container which I've had for many, many years. Um, there are no drainage holes in here, you see. And I'm just going to fill it maybe halfway up with some homemade compost and then plant and then dig up the plants, put them in here and then top them up a little bit. And I'm deliberately doing that because the plants I'm speaking of can actually do really very well by rivers and lakes and ponds or, you know, as a marginal plant. A marginal plant, let me just go to the pond. A marginal plant is such which will tolerate having its roots in, in water. So those particular plants can actually do quite well in water, but where I've got them situated, I think is actually quite a dry bed. And so that's the reason why I'm going to pick, um, dig them up from where they currently are and see if I can just transport them into another space. Okay, so I'm just gonna dig out some compost. Let's see if I can manage that. And this is lovely stuff. Um, it's just some homemade compost. 
um, homemade compost is really all our kitchen waste. Um, we don't have any animal animal products in here, so we're just talking about you know you know all vegetables, all kinds of vegetables. We also put things like lemon peels and orange peels and grapefruit peels. Some people say you don't put citrus into compost, but we just find we put it all in, onion peels, all sorts. And then of course, um, in the compost, you can also add um, the carbon. The carbon will be old newspapers, uh, cardboard boxes that you get deliveries, that you get with your deliveries. Um, old tissue, the inside of the kitchen roll. So I'll fill this container about halfway, approximately. And then I'll go back to start digging the lilies out. Okay, I think that might, that might do it. So here's a close-up of the plant. It has some roots. It has like a rhizome or a bulb here. And it can get to quite a beautiful structured plant. But for some reason, I think this area is quite dry. And because they can do so well in marginal areas or boggy areas, which are very damp, wet, and even have their roots sat in water, I'm going to transplant these into the red container. Here is that plant again. The roots don't mind being in water, so I'm going to plant them into this container here. With the weather being so much milder now, um, the plants are really just putting on so much fresh growth. So at this time of year, I'm sure like many, the plants in the garden are just raring to go. We've had a lot of rainfall this year. In fact, really since last year here in the UK, we've had a lot of rainfall. So maybe I could have left her where she was and she would have done well. But despite the rain we've had in previous years, I've just always found that for some reason um, I've just not had her flower. And I have had the experience of seeing her gorgeous flowers and I'm really hoping that this move I'm making just to transplant her into a container where I can control the water in here that she will absolutely shine. So. Of course, I'll be sure to bring you up on a journey just to let you know how it goes. But what I need to do now is just get a bit of compost and just top it up just to make sure that the roots are all underneath here. Okay, so I'm going to do that next. So regular compost. I'm just going to scatter some over the top of this plant. I'm 
then going to water this in significantly and as always because I've just made this here the squirrels are likely to come in and try and dig them all out so I'll find a netting of some sort to cover this just to prevent the squirrels from digging these out so I'm just going to get some water and water that in There we have it another job that i've managed to get done in this garden thank you so much for joining me as always the comments you guys are so amazing i love communicating with you in the comment section and do be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others so that we can absolutely try and generate this amazing community that we are growing um, i'll be showing you some new videos as well about some of the seeds that i've grown seeds that I've grown, <laughs> seeds that I've received recently and that those that I'm going to be growing um, and mostly edibles, a lot of edibles. So please do that thumbs up, a lovely comment in the comment section if you'd like to. I hope you can join me in my next video so that we can just keep growing this community of individuals who appreciate nature, who appreciate gardening. Thank you so much. Take care. And as I've just spoken, I'm just going to let the video keep rolling. There's a robin that's just come above my eye on my right hand side. I'm going to see if I can. Oh, she's coming to where I've just been digging. You might not see her in this video. But thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you in my next video.